Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. We had been dating since our university days and our relationship was amazing, except for some rough patches now and then. He was a handsome, intelligent, motivated guy, but was also an introvert. I was also not that sociable, but had a small circle of friends and was happy to have them. Besides, being introverted, my husband was also shy and would compare himself with others, and I felt like he had an inferiority complex. In the beginning, when we started dating, I thought that he only needed someone to support him and tell him that he was great and lacked nothing, but as we got married, I started getting how he really was. My husband started criticizing everything I would do and never missed a single chance he got to humiliate me. I have been a bit healthy since my childhood, and that is just the way I am. He chose to date me and then he even married me, but suddenly my weight became a major problem in his life. Whenever we would attend parties or go to gatherings, my husband would make sure to tell me that I did not look apt for the event. He would then compare me with other women and would say that he was embarrassed to have me by his side. In the start, I thought he only wanted to groom me and would say that, you know, just because he wanted to see me in a better shape. But slowly, I realized that it was his inferiority complex that made him do that. My husband worked in a bank while I had a home-based bakery as baking was my hobby, and I loved my work. My husband had told me so many times that I could go for a professional job as I had a degree just because he was embarrassed to tell his two friends that I was a baker and had a home-based bakery. I took a stand and told him that I was never going to switch my profession, and if it was that cheap, he could take up all the expenses on himself and I would not contribute. My husband stopped bashing my bakery, but I knew he still hated it. One day, my husband told me that I needed to join the gym and hire a dietitian. He also said that as I baked, eating sugary foods had increased my weight, and I looked like a bull. I told him that he was being the meanest man, and if he did not stop saying those things, I was going to leave him. When I told him that I was going to dump him, he quickly apologized and told me that he did not mean that and was just joking. This was his new tactic. He would say whatever he wanted to and then would say that he was just kidding and I could not take the joke. We were invited to a party thrown by my best friend on her anniversary and I had chosen a fish cut gown. My husband told me that I would look fat in that and should wear something loose. I didn't listen to him and wore that dress to the party. It was a huge party and a lot of people were invited. My husband kept checking out other women and then told me that we were leaving. I was shocked and asked him why he wanted us to leave, which he replied that he was embarrassed to be with me as every other man had a beautiful and well-shaped woman by his side. My husband started bashing me loudly and I left the party and went to my mom's place. My husband divorced me within a week. Now, after four years of divorce, my husband has called me recently and has told me that he wanted to get back to me. I told him that he was dreaming because I had already made a mistake when I married him and was not going to give him another chance. He told me that he had never lived happily after he removed me from his life and regretted his decision. There's no way I'm going back to him as he is a cheap and shallow man and I'm already dating someone who is decent and knows that appearances do not matter. Also, my business has flourished and I have three bakeries now. My life is so fulfilled and complete that it has no place for bullshit. But my ex keeps calling me and then drops hundreds of text messages and is having a headache. My ex-husband told me that he wanted to see me once and then I could decide if I wanted to get back or not. I told him that I was not confused at all and that seeing him would not change my mind. I also told him that I was already dating someone and he was a great person, so he had no chance at all. He told me that he had remarried but was not at all happy and wanted to divorce his wife. I told him that he could do whatever he wanted to and hung up. My ex-husband kept texting me, saying that his wife was a bitch and treated him like trash. He also told me that he had gifted his house to her and did not know what to do as he could not even divorce her. To be honest, I enjoy those texts and was glad that he was experiencing all that with his spouse.
He had married someone who looked great, groomed, well-maintained, as he had sent me her photos, and now she must be telling him that he was an embarrassment. He had also sent a link to her Facebook account and told me that he was not even in photos with her because she was so self-absorbed. My ex-husband texted me if I could tell him how my relationship was going because he was sure that I was not happy without him. I told him that he could come over on the weekend and see how my life was going because nothing was like he imagined. My ex-husband came over on Sunday and my husband was not home. He knew that my ex was coming, but he was busy with some work and told me that he would join as soon as possible. My ex-husband stood awestruck at the sight of my apartment and told me that it was amazing. He told me that I looked amazing and that made me laugh because he was being an idiot. My husband came home and I introduced them both, telling my husband that my ex thought I was not living a happy life. I served tea and we all had a chit-chat and then I told my ex-husband that as he had seen how good my life was going on, he could leave and I wished he had a better time. I told my ex-husband that he did not have to contact me again because he was imagining things that were never going to happen. My ex still did not stop texting me and told me that I had become showy and superficial because I was not happy and my relationship was not real. I told him to shut up and blocked his number. My ex had texted my boyfriend on his Facebook account that I still loved him and acted to be happy because I did not want to break his heart. He sort of tried to emotionally blackmail him saying that he was being a hurdle between our happiness and if he was not there, I would have gone together with my ex as we shared a history. My husband showed me those texts and we had a good laugh. He asked me if I wanted to report my ex-husband, but I had a better idea as my ex-husband should not have shown me his wife's Facebook. I texted his wife and told her that I wanted to see her as soon as possible. She, of course, did not agree and then I had to tell her who I was. I sent her the screenshots in which my ex-husband had bitched about her and told her that I had a plan to catch him red-handed as he would never confess that he was dying to get back with me. I had invited her to a cafe and told my ex-husband to see me at the same cafe after an hour. We were still sitting when my ex-husband entered the cafe and when he saw us together, he literally ran from there. His wife left right away and I came back. I'm curious to know what he had to go through, and if I got any updates, I will show up here. I had unblocked my ex's number as I was waiting for him to text me because I knew he would text or call me to tell me what damage I had done. Also, as his house no more belonged to him, I knew his wife was going to throw him out of it. My ex-husband, of course, called and told me that I was the worst person on earth as I had destroyed his life. I told him that it was not me who started this by contacting the other's spouse and saying shit, which was not even true. I said I had played it better as everything I said was true, and I could also prove it. My husband told me that his wife had filed for divorce and was of course going to kick him out of her house. He blamed me for that and said that he had nowhere to go and was going to be homeless. I told him, that he earned well and could rent a place if he had any financial issues. I had a vacancy at one of my bakeries. I have blocked him from everywhere and also made my husband block him. I am sure he is not going to show up at our place because he knows I'm going to involve cops. NTA, OP and Karma both played well and OP's husband got what he deserved. I do not understand why OP took that long to understand that her ex was not worth it. Despite being bullied all the time, she chose to stay and did not even think of leaving him. He had serious issues, and OP should have left him just when she had sensed that he was a sucker. NTA, OP's husband, is a desperate and confused a-hole who does not even know what he wants. He praised looks and beauty, and when he married a well-groomed woman, he wanted someone who loved and appreciated him. He should first think and become sure of what he actually wants. He served well, and I hope he got a lesson. Next story. I've been friends with Kyra, female, 45, for a while now. She's always a bit nervy and an overthinker. A couple of years ago, Kyra became mildly unwell, but it took quite a while for her to receive a diagnosis. As it's identifiable, I won't state it, but it was a condition that certainly could be managed with medication and if needed, an operation equivalent to having your tonsils removed. 
Worried for Kyra when she shared her diagnosis, I read a lot about it uh, to be able to understand and offer support. I don't doubt that she felt unwell and she did have the operation around a year ago. Due to a birth defect, I'm used to having surgery and I've had several operations over the years. I understand the toll that it can have on you and that it can take a while to feel better. After Kyra's surgery, she kept saying that she felt unwell and complained about the treatment from the hospital. From the outside, the treatment she was receiving seemed standard. Levels of contact, number of appointments. Kyra and I have a number of mutual friends. I was out with one of those friends when she said that Kyra was doing well, saying that she had had brain surgery and nearly died. I was confused as Kyra had not had brain surgery and her condition was not one with a fatality rate. Her husband had said that the operation went well and that there were no complications. I said this to our mutual friend, who I felt thought that I was being mean. I certainly wasn't trying to be, but I was confused as to why Kyra was saying that she'd had a brain tumor removed. I looked up the condition again, and the medical pages stated that it is not a brain tumor and does not involve brain surgery. I decided that our mutual friend must have been confused and carried on with life. Every time in the past year that I've seen Kyra, she has brought up the operation again. It's reached a stage now where she will force it into conversation to say how traumatic it was that she nearly died. I've tried to ignore this as I feel it's now reached a stage of attention seeking, and when I've suggested speaking to someone about the trauma, she said she doesn't need to. In the meantime, Kyra has been receiving attention and gifts from others who believe her story. I spoke with her husband about how Kyra was doing and again he reiterated how she was fine and how minor this surgery was. I told him what she had been saying and he was horrified. He said it was certainly untrue. A few days later, Kyra messaged me as her husband had confronted her and had gone to stay with relatives. She's saying that I have ruined her life by telling him what she had said. Am I the a-hole? NTA, her husband walked out on her because she lied. It's pretty standard when someone has major surgery to make sure immediate family is okay and if they need anything. If it wasn't you, it would have been someone else wondering why he's so chipper after his wife had brain surgery. NTA, you brought it up to her husband because you were getting conflicting stories and genuinely concerned about your friend. What happened between her and her husband to make him leave over her deception with others is between them, not your doing. Your friend should have been more careful of who she lied to if she didn't want it to get back to her husband. Next story. My parents were never happy. I think they just got married because they thought that's what people did and it never occurred to them that they weren't compatible. Growing up, my dad always seemed depressed. He was a good dad, but he always seemed really sad. He asked my mom to divorce multiple times and she said no. She knew he cheated, but that didn't particularly care. She didn't want to divorce because of what people would say and because she didn't want to cut back on her lifestyle at all. When my younger sister was 18, he finally left her for another woman. She was devastated and humiliated. It was pretty cliche because she was 15 years younger, beautiful, and my dad is rich. Honestly, I kind of hate her just for being the other woman and because my mom is so insecure and she made it 100% worse, but my dad is so happy, so I'm trying to forgive him. It's been six years, they were married, and I know that she is here to stay. I'm getting married, and a lot of people said that I shouldn't invite her, and I'm a bad daughter. I am trying to be understanding, so she is invited, but not allowed to be in pictures. My mom desperately does not want her there, and has been crying and guilting me. My mom's self-esteem is crap and she has so many body issues. I told my dad that his wife could come if she wore plain navy blue, so absolutely no attention seeking, and I guess to make her less beautiful so my mom doesn't feel so crappy. My dad said I was being unfair, and what about his feelings? His wife would come if she could wear black. She would agree. Uh, she apparently hates navy. I feel like it's my wedding and I'm being gracious by even letting her come and she has plenty of fancy events where she gets to wear what she wants. Not being the most beautiful woman in the room is not going to kill her for one night. My dad still feels that I'm being insensitive. 
YTA. But my dad is so happy, so I'm trying to forgive him. Forgive him for what? He tried to leave multiple times. Your mother refused him. He was depressed. He waited until his last kid, I assume from the way it's written, was 18, an adult, and then he left. Your father has done nothing wrong. Your mother kept him in an unhappy relationship because she didn't want people to gossip and she didn't want to give up her lifestyle. So she kept your father unhappy and depressed for selfish reasons. So why are you needing to forgive him? Your mother's issues are her own. She needs therapy. Your father and his wife shouldn't have to pay the price for your other issues. Your father shouldn't have to carry your mother's weight anymore. Thank you. Opie and her mom are big time AHs. She doesn't need to forgive him for anything. And she has admitted that she hates his father. So just because she was the other woman, grow the hell up, OP. You and your mom, who still thinks that she is the center of the world. YTA, seriously? I'm being gracious by even letting her come? You're really not. If you're this determined that she spends every second she's there, this aware of just how unwelcome she is. Just spare everyone the petty nonsense and don't invite her. Granted, you have to accept that probably means your dad's not coming either, but maybe that'll help get it through your head once and for all that you can't push all the blame for your parents' dysfunctional relationship onto the person who just happened to show up at the point where your dad finally realized that he didn't actually need your mom's permission to leave and quit putting in even the bare minimum effort. 